congratulate the Dr. Avinit Bhakshi Bhattnagarji, Director of the Institute, the Coordinator, Dr. Gobind Kumar, Convener, Ms. Monika Sharma, and Co-Coordinator, Ms. Rita Singh, for organizing a very good five-day FTP programs, and which is a very fruitful, I think, for the whole of the men of the institutions. This IMT College of which organized with the FD program from the 9th February 22-22. And in the inaugural session was inaugurated by managing director, Dr. Mayank Agrawal. And he has presided and welcomed all the guests and which was graced by the Dr. Nilesh Sharma, advisor AICT, Dr. Adrian Bajpai, Vice Chancellor, Atal Bihari Bajpai, Vishwadhyale. And Dr. Amit Datta, Deputy Director, Atal Cell AICT. The annual session was joined by more than 6,000 participants. Now, I also welcome the other guests, the participants, the HODs, the faculty members for this validity function, who has been jointly made efforts to make this FT program very successful where this more than 600 participants has attended and around about 350 institutions have participated. The institution which have participated, some of the institutions are there, one from the Nigeria University, that is Yobo State University, Nigeria, then Hamaya University, Ethiopia, the Lord Institute of Technology, the St. Joseph Institute of Technology, St. Francis College, Bangalore, Sharda University, SGT University, Ramindranath Tagore University, Punjabi University, Patiala, Patna University, OP Jinder Golabhan University, Sonipat, ISMB University, Institute of Home Economics University of Delhi, IFCAI University, University Dehradun, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar University, Agra, and so many universities have participated. In this, we have a, the imminent accumulation as a resource person, the first, after the inaugural, the Dr. Raj Kumar Singh, a gen faculty from IIT Delhi, as a resource person for the first technical session. He spoke on paradigm shift in higher education. In further session, we had Dr. Amar Fajal, the regional, assistant regional director in regional centers, Delhi, who spoke on use of online videos and live streaming in education. Dr. Tithi Bhatnagar, Associate Professor, Deputy Director, Center for Leadership and Change and Change. And then that is from, she's from OP Jindal University, Sonipat, had a wonderful talk on role and importance of positive education. Other guest speakers, we had Dr. Maheshwata Saha, Tripura University, Professor Muhammad Udeddin Bukhari, AMU Aligarh, Professor and Dr. Deepak Kumar, MIT University, Dr. Ajit Kumar, IGNU, New Delhi University, so New Delhi, Dr. Rashmi Bhatia, Director, XIMD, Nevada. So they are the few, and there are others also who participated as a source person and made this program very successful. And I congratulate the coordinator, the co-coordinator, and the director of the institute for making this program very successful. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you uh, so much, sir. Thank you so much for your inspiring and kind words. Uh, sir, it's a vision for the whole IMT group of colleges as a whole that has helped us to progress and march ahead. Your focus has always been on faculty development and it is really inspiring for us, sir. We hope to continue ahead and achieve more new heights. Thank you so much for your address, sir. Thank you. Uh, I take pleasure to introduce our chief guest for the, for the valedictory session, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Gupta. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Gupta is Regional Higher Education Officer, Merit and Saharanpur Division. Sir has been awarded with doctorate from Agra University and has 21 years of teaching and research experience with administrative experience of monitoring higher education institutes of Merit and Saharanpur. Sir has industrial experience of working as Senior Manager of Finance and Corporate Management Auditor with many corporate houses. 
He has 15 research paper publications to his name and supervised 90 MBA research projects and PhD research works. Sir has also attended and presented in 50 plus conferences and seminars. He has co-authored a book, Patthakarita Vidyayan or Ayam. Continuing ahead with his list of uh, long achievements, he, he was covered by The Week magazine in October 2006 under the section The People as a Teacher with a Cause, was awarded Certificate of Excellence by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting for producing short film Swachita Ki Class and was awarded Bolt Award by Air India. Apart from the field of academics, Sir is also inclined towards theatre and has founded Noida Theatre Club, which is continuously performing street plays on social issues. He is associated with many various social causes like env environmental conservation, has developed Noida Book Donors Club on Facebook and has launched the website bloodanddemand.com to help the masses in case of need of blood. It gives me immense pleasure and honor to welcome you, sir. I request sir for his welcome address. Uh, Dr. Gupta, can you hear me? Am I audible? Uh, uh, yes, sir, you're audible. You're audible, sir. Uh, thank you, madam, for speaking nice words in the praise of me. I'm fortunate enough to be part of online FDP program organized by IMT College of Management, Greater Noida. Really, today at the occasion of voluntary session of online FDP on recent advancement and emerging technologies in the area of education research. The guest on the dais, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi. Regional Director Ignu, Noida, Dr. M. K. Soni, Director General IMT, Dr. Govind Kumar, Coordinator, Dr. Monika Sharma, Convener, Mrs. Rita Singh, Co Convener, and Dr. Avind Bakshi, Bhatnagar, Director, and all the participants, I welcome you all. Really, the topic is very good. It is the need of the day. As we all are aware that we have adopted the national education policy 2020. And in the 21st century, we are advancing towards the development of education. And as we are passing through the the calamity of COVID, which made us to adopt online education in place of offline education. Nature has played a role that we must change our system. Since our education system was not so strong and 
was not according to the need of the time. Our honorable prime minister was having vision that we must make our system strong and it should be qualitative. National Education Policy 2020 was launched with the objective of making our country self-dependent and simultaneously it should also boost our economy. For that purpose, vision was to universalize the education and for that purpose there was need of developing digital pedagogy and for that purpose we were required to use and trained our teachers about latest tools and technologies we also allowed to our students to, to be flexible towards the EG access and entry from the courses and adoption of courses flexibly like we can study the science with commerce, commerce with arts. So this flexibility was provided. So when we are supposed to follow the national education policy 2020, in that case, the importance of recent advancement and emerging technologies in the area of education research is also very much. I must say that this IMT group of colleges has vision. They have selected this topic wisely and because our teachers require the knowledge that how we should use the emerging technologies in the area of education and research. So, as we were bound to carry out online classes due to coronavirus and our colleges were running classes on mobiles. Our students are keeping the smartphones. When they are keeping the smartphones, our education must be also smart. Otherwise, the purpose of education will not be achieved. So, for that purpose, the first and foremost requirement is there should be digital literacy. As today we are joined, we are organizing online FDP. I am speaking at this occasion through this platform Google Meet. So unless the all are aware that how these platforms are working, what are the protocols, how we should speak on these platforms, what are the technologies, we will not be in a position to achieve our objective. So from that point of view, there is a need of digital literacy. 
our digital technology has provided social media facebook twitter instagram our students are very much fascinated towards these social media most of their time is going with these medias so we must also use these media for the purpose of education so our requirement is that how we should create digital literacy second part is we should also develop library media specialist because library media is most important how our students will be able to use the library earlier our students used to go for library for consulting the books nowadays there is a plethora of material on the digital mode so we must also have the specialist how they can train our students that to select the material from these platforms there are several things are available which one is suitable which is correct unless our library media specialists are trained are providing the direction we will not be in a position to reap the result of our education system moreover there should be collaborative learnings this is the need of the day collaborative learning means as we are having this this online fdp on this program and all are having collaboration we must join hands because some are having some specialization some are having some other specialization we must have hands with our other institutions because when we are working together we will have the better results generally we work in isolation but when we work in isolation we think we are the best but when we work in collaboration then we find that our output will be much better what is required is that we should infuse to our students the trained that they should have that team spirit what is happening in advanced countries people are having association they are working together but in our country people are not having this the tendency to collaborate because we doubt each other we have the shortcoming that we work in isolation when we will work in collaboration certainly our results will be much better moreover we should use the smart techniques rather using the obsolete and traditional methods people were taught with the use of chalk and duster 
but nowadays there is a need of using of interactive whiteboards when we are having the interactive whiteboards certainly they are having the facility to attract the attention of our students and our students are more focused and the outcome of these technologies are the need of the day we should have the use of latest technologies like development of mobile apps apps are friendly to the our users they can be easily accessed so we should develop the mobile apps we should have the use of our social media youtube because our students are more attracted towards this digital media youtube is a very good source we can have our youtube channel for the college when we will run classes on youtube certainly our students will be in a position to see the lecture at any time when he is free and he is having the sincere interest towards the learning because what we are finding that when teachers were teaching teaching was there but there should be learning also we must check whether our students are learning or not so for that purpose we should have the feedback like we should have the use of google forms google forms are having the facility of getting the answers on all the questions in the form of quiz because when we use the quiz our students are assessed that what is the level of their learning because unless the learning is monitored timely it is of no use so we must use the google forms for checking the level of learning and we should also motivate them by issuing the certificates these are the trends these are the technologies we should adopt while doing research our research can only be complete when we get the feedback earlier doing survey was a tough task now with the use of google form we can get feedback from our respondents moreover these technologies also provide our the graphical presentation what is the level of our achievement so these are the certain advancement technologies in the area of education and research i am not expert in this subject and i am happy to meet virtually the regional director of ignu ignu is the biggest 
university in the world and our the guests are having the vast knowledge because they are also catering the a vast number of students because catering to the lakhs of students at a time how to carry out their examination in online mode how to assess them timely how to declare their result because it is a tough task in the situation when we are facing the corona virus impact when these calamities these epidemic are making our colleges to run online then it is the duty of our institutions that we must also evaluate their level of le learning online for that purpose we have to use the latest technology tools and i am sure that in the 21st century when we are thinking about universalization of education we have to match our system with the other countries for that purpose we have to be the very much knowledgeable about the latest technologies in the area of education and research i will not take much time and i will say that that we all academicians must be very much devoted to learn about these emerging technologies otherwise our all our efforts will be of no use and i hope that this faculty development program run for 5 days will be of grand success they must have enjoyed the is different speakers on earlier days and i am the person who is not so expert but i am privileged to be called as chief guest i say thanks to the organizers and i also appreciate the main director of this group dr mayank agrawal that they invited me and i also appreciate the courtesy shown by this group for giving me chance to share my views thanking you uh thank you so much sir for your words and blessings and so very rightly said by you that uh, we need to move from traditional mode of education towards making our education smart and the need to digital literacy has increased tremendously and we as institutions need to collectively work together to achieve this goal and i guess use of different pedagogies is the need of the hour especially in this uh, pandemic time Uh, thank you so much uh, for your words sir thank you so much for your uh, valuable time for us thank you 
Uh, with this, it's my heartiest pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi. Uh, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi is Senior Regional Director, IGNU Regional Center, Noida. Sir so has completed his MBA in Financial Management from IGNU, New Delhi, and was awarded with Doctorate in Applied Econ Economics from B.R. Ambedkar University, Agra. Sir so has organized four national conferences and workshops, has attended 62 national and international seminar conferences and workshops, and has published 35 research papers and articles in recognized journals. He has chapters published in around 14 books and has two books published to his names. Uh, his long list of credentials include his presentations and invita invitations in around 41 conferences. Sir so has organized many extended contract uh, programs, uh, has undertaken several projects and has delivered talk on Doodashan talks and radio talks and has participated as an expert in several live interactive radio counseling sessions. Sir has also been instrumental in development of manuals for distance education functionaries and has attended and organized many training orientation programs and workshops for the same. Throughout his glorious professional journey, Sir has also held many positions of relevance at various academic bodies and membership of a committee. Sir, it is my honor to welcome you on behalf of uh, IMT College of Management. I request Sir uh, for his welcome address. Thank you, Pandit Kawali. It is really my pleasure that uh, IMT group of, uh, group of Management has called me as a guest of honor. Dr. M.K. Soniji, Director General, IMT Group. Dr. Rajiv Gupta, uh, Regional Higher Education Officer as a Chief Guest. Managing Director, Dr. Mayank Agrawal and dear friends. First of all, I would like to inform you that IGNU is doing this online and ODI uh, education is imparting ODI education from 1992, 1987 since inception. IGNU was established in 1987 by act of parliament and the modus operandi of the IGNU to provide the education through the blended learning. Blended learning means the adoption of the impart, uh, adoption of the uh, two or three uh, educational technology in, during the course of the year. We are conducting the face-to-face -face education uh, through the study centers. We are giving our lectures through the Gyan Darshan, Gyan Vani, teleconferencing, web conferencing since inception. As Dr. Sajj Dr. Rajiv Gupta suggested that the flexibility in the choosing of the course, he has suggested. But as far as the IGNU is concerned, we are doing from the since inception. The student has flexibility to choose the courses from the either from the commerce or science Science student can take the commerce courses also. This is, uh, this is given in the uh, new education policy. The basic aim of the new education policy is the universalization of education from pre-education pre to the secondary education or in 100% the gross enrollment ratio in the school education to by to 2020, 2030. As Honorable uh, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has a vision to develop the uh, digital university. Now we are doing and we are doing in such a way. We are giving the education during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. We have never faced any problem for the imparting education. IGRU was only the university which has started its uh, uh, online classes through the web conferencing, through the Google Meet, through the Zoom. Uh, 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 our teachers, exam uh, teachers, experts, academicians gave the lectures through the uh, 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 Google Meet and Zoom technology. As the objective of the new education policy 2020 to make the India is a global knowledge as suggested by the doctor. Uh, 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 Dr. Rajiv Gupta. 
Do you know the what is the blended learning? Why the new education policy has suggested the blended learning? The blended learning is an approach to education that combines online education with the traditional classroom method. It requires the physical presence of the both. Place and path and place. Blended learning, also known as the hybrid learning, is a method of the teaching that integrates the technology and digital as suggested by the new education policy. The online education has taken a big step in the education scenario. Every year, the large online education system. As far as the IGNU is concerned, the IGNU is using the multiple method of imparting education, as I suggest, said earlier, to, in the learning, teaching learning process. Am I audible? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Now you're audible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there is a uh, electricity pro problem, and, and immediately the internet was disconnected. Uh, no issue, sir. You may continue, sir. Okay. So, Brandon, uh, uh, I was uh, suggesting due to the COVID nineteen pandemic, the over one point two billion child childrens are out of the school just because of the COVID-19 situation. And this is the scenario was seen in the 2020. As a result, the education system has changed considerably with the distinct increase of the e-learning and online learning, where, whereby the teaching is undertaken remotely and on the digital formats. Research suggests suggests that the online learning has been shown to increase the, the information, takes less time, meaning the changes, coronavirus have caused the might of the real scrape. In the response, many schools have begun to offer the blended learning option uh, to, to their students. As, a, as we are know, uh, as we, uh, we are aware, on 10th May 2020, I recall, as on 10th May 2020, the University Grant Commission has issued a public notice regarding the reduction of the grievances relevant to the COVID-19 pandemic. The UGC has advised to plan their academic activities keeping in the view of safety of the all stakeholders, giving the highest priority to the health of the all concerned while adopting and implementing the guideline. The UGC has also suggested to establish a cell of in educational institution and uh, handling the grievances of the student. Our honorable prime minister observed that the, during the last five to six decades, there was exponential growth in the higher education across the world. It is multiplying in the geometrical progression, not the arithmetical progression. The new educational technologies have been introduced by providing education to all segments of the society. 
Online education and ODL system of education proved a boon in the present situation of the COVID-19 pandemic. Online courses are very convenient, very flexible. The student can start their, uh, uh, their education at their home, right from the home. They are offered individual attentions. The online courses are very economical and cost effective because there is no uh, uh, movability of the student from one place to another place. Online courses uh, teach the learners to be self-disciplined. Online courses connect the students to the global village. From, from uh, India, you can access the uh, uh, curriculum of the United States of America. You can access the, uh, the, the online education and digital education. What are the challenges of the online education system? In, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is the greatest challenge for the educator for imparting education, not only in India, but also in the, across the world. Achanak is the problem emerged we world ke samne. And COVID-19 has changed the entire scenario for the education imparting education. And every country has introduced the new technologies, educational technology, that is a great. And in Indra Gandhi National Open University or India is the fastest mode for the imparting the new technologies of education. As far as the directions of the MHRD, the state government and central government have directed to the constituent colleges and institutions to start the face-to-face -face instruction to the students and requiring them to switch the online teaching and learning e-learning. In the mid March 2020, last year, last before last year, year before last year, the central government has taken a step to lock down all the services, including the educational institution. As per the direction of the government of uh, government of India and Ministry of HRD, has ensued the circular of the closing the schools and colleges temporarily as a measure of containing the spread of the novel coronavirus. Really, it, is, it was a great challenge for the head education institution, institution to continue the education through the alternative mode because they don't have the sufficient infrastructure. But in the light of this, but IGNU has never stopped its, its education. It has our EMPC, Electronic Media Production Center. They have taken the lead for important education through the Google Meet, through the Facebook Live, it is a critical period of, it was a critical period of education system to conduct the entrance examination. The government, the government has suggested to conduct the online examinations. Teaching learning, including the assessment methodology have been badly affected due to the closure of the colleges and institutions of the higher learning. It was, now we have started the Google we, we, we have, we have the educational institution have started the collection of the uh, uh, assignments from the student through the Google form. Google form as suggested by the Rajesh Gupta, Rakesh Gupta, Rajiv Gupta, the Google form. Online courses require the most time in the com, uh, on campus. Online courses has some limitation there, definitely. Okay. Uh, we do not have the uh, infrastructure. Online courses have complete dependency on the technology or internet. As far as the big cities are concerned, as far as the metropolitan, metropolitan cities are concerned, we have the technology, we have the uninterrupted internet supply. But in the remote areas, there is a problem in the internet. There is a problem in the infrastructure. So we have to uh, uh, see these uh, problems and uh, and uh, we have given our suggestions to the government of India to give the proper infrastructure to the uh, rural area. And online courses require the good infrastructure, as I suggested earlier. Online courses require the good internet. Uh, online courses is the sense of isolation. This is also in the next uh, next problem. The online education. We are talking about the online education. If the student is away from the school. If the students are away from the peer groups, they will not interact with each other. 
face to face. This is the wrong sense of isolation. Students are sitting in their households. They are talking with their parents only. There is no, no peer group and no friend is there. So this is a problem and it can be uh, sorted out and it can be the correspondence. Face-to-face uh, uh, -face teaching is an, a, a good education system and by including uh, online education, we have to include it. But face-to-face, -face, some element of the face-to-face -face education is also mandatory as far as the growth of the students are concerned. Online education requires the learners for responsible for their own learning. Now, viability of the online courses. MOOCs. Massive open online requires more than 7.1 billion students are currently taking the at least one online course. Massive online uh, open online course MOOCs are effective. The researchers have discovered and they are as effective as uh, traditional thought of the teaching. Swain courses, the IMT group is a higher education system. Swain courses, it is a program initiated by the government of India and designed to achieve three credentials of the principles of the education policies, access, equity, and quality. What are the four quadrants of the Swain? We talk video lectures. So in courses, we are developing many institutions, many, uh, many researchers, many institutions are developing the same courses. There, there, there are the four components in the same courses. Video lecture, especially prepared the teaching learning method, which is which should be downloadable, printed form. Self-assessment test, it should be there, like the test and puzzles and uh, you know, quiz and online discussion forum for the clearing the doubts. These are the four steps of the SWAM courses. The steps have been taken to enrich the learning experience by the using an audio, video, multi multimedia, and state of the art of pedagogy and teaching learning. What are the, the roles of institutions providing the online education? In order to ensure the best quality of the content of the produced and delivered nine National coordinators have been appointed to provide the online courses. This is the this is the topic: recent advancement and emerging technologies in the era of the education and research. This is the uh, uh, this is the FDP faculty development online program. Earlier, it was known as the seminar. Now, uh, after the adoption of the online, now seminar became the webinar. New technologies, new changes have been coming. Correspondence education has been changed with the open and distance learning, and open and distance learning is now changing in online education, and online education is also changing in the digital education. The nine coordinators, who are the nine coordinators of providing the online learning? AICT, NAPTEL, UGC, CEC, NCRT, NIUS, IGNU. IGNU is one of the pioneers for the providing the higher education, IIMB, NN. So these are the, uh, these, these are the role, uh, role model of the institutions of the providing the online education. I am very thankful to the, uh, uh, to the IMT group for inviting me for the lecture for, uh, in the valedictory session in the recent advancement of the emerging technology in the era of the year. I am once again thanks to uh, Rajiv Gupta ji, Regional Higher Education uh, Officer. I am also thankful to Dr. M. K. Soni ji, Director General of the IMT Group. Dr. Govind Kumar, the Coordinator, Menka Sharma, Convener, Co-Convener Rita Singh and Dr. Bhat Nagar. I am also thankful to Dr. Mayank Agrawal, Managing Director of IMT Group and Amita, uh, Dr. Amit Datta, Deputy Director, he's uh, uh, earlier in the morning, uh, in the uh, uh, first session, uh, Achar Adian Bajpai has given the lecture as a guest of honor address. He is very good friend of mine. He has, never, he has invited me to some, uh, some lectures, uh, Dr. Adian Bajpai, and I know him from the last 
15 years. And this is all about the environment. And once again, I am thankful to the IMT group for inviting me for such type of the as guest of honor. Thank you, Vinci. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, sir, for your insights. And so very rightly, you have said that with the challenges that were in front of us, uh, all the educational institutions in the past two years, especially, so many different and uh, new learning platforms have mushroomed up. But it is very essential that we materialize these platforms with face to face learning. Uh, thank you so much for your valuable time for us, sir. Uh, uh, I request now to Dr. Abhyanand, Dean BCA, IMT College of Management, for the deliverance of vote of thanks and to conclude the one week online FTP. Thank you, Pravneet, ma'am. Uh, it's an opportunity and I think it's a challenge also that at the end of the session, once everything is over and nobody is in a mood to hear anything more, I have to propose vote of thanks. So I accept this challenge. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of IMT College of Management, Greater Noida, and on behalf of our respected directors, sir, Dr. Abhinna Vakshi Bhatnaga, myself, Dr. Abhyanan, Professor and Dean, IMT College of Management, Greater Noida, take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks in today's valedictory function of FDP on recent advancements and emerging technologies in the area of education and research successfully conducted by IMT College of Management Greater Noida from 3rd Feb 2022 to 9th Feb 2022 in online mode by maintaining social distancing norms and COVID appropriate protocols come behavior. First of all, I extend my deepest gratitude to our honorable managing director of IMT Group of Colleges, Dr. Mayank Agrawal for the presidential and welcome address in the inaugural session. Thank you very much, sir. You are a true source of inspiration and motivation to all of us. Your constant guidance and support helped us in completing this FDP so successfully. I am extremely obliged to our respected DG, sir, IMT Group of Colleges, Dr. M.K. Soni, for the keynote address in the valedictory session. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words and blessings. It matters a lot to all of us and it recharges our battery. I am highly thankful to our respected director, sir, Dr. Avin Vakshi Bhatnagar. Sir, you are a true leader. Your constant support, help and guidance and never ending support, sir, is very much important to all of us. Thank you so much, sir, for your faith and confidence in all of us, without which it would not have been possible. I am very much thankful to the chief guest of today's valedictory function, Dr. Rajiv Gupta, Regional Higher Education Officer, uh, Dr. Rajiv Gupta, Regional Higher Education Officer, Merit and Saharanpur Division, for, very, for sparing your valuable time and addressing the session, sir. Thank you so much, sir. You have addressed us and shared so much valuable things and knowledge, especially regarding the kind of form in which we can use Google form for taking a student's feedback and increasing the learning. I am very much thankful to the chief, to the guest of honor, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi, Senior Regional Director, IGNO, Noida, for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion. Thank you so much, sir, for your words of wisdom and sharing your knowledge with us, especially on blended learning. I am thankful to all the eminent guest speakers who have spared their valuable time to deliver their lectures in the FDP during various sessions from 3rd Feb to 9th Feb 2022. I am also thankful to all the directors, deans, HODs and members of faculty of IMT Group of Colleges, Greater Noida. I am grateful to the coordinator of the FDP, Dr. Gobind Kumar Gupta, the convener, Menka ma'am, co-convener, Rita ma'am, Anchor, Pravneet ma'am, as well as the entire technical team for their relentless efforts and timely execution of work to ensure the smooth conduct of this FDP on digital platform in this worldwide pandemic environment. Last but not the least, I extend my sincere thanks to all the participants of the FDP from IMT group of colleges 
as well as from other institutions of repute across the globe who have ensured their active participation in the fdp thank you so much to all of you your active participation has helped us to reach the landmark registration figure of 1900 plus participants in this fdp thank you so much i wish you all the best for your future endeavors Thank you so much, sir. We hereby declare a successful conclusion to this one-week online FTP. Thank you so much for your time and patience.